Hi everyone, thanks for joining me with the Children's Liturgy of the Word. Today is the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and um, today's readings are about forgiveness, so we're going to hear a lot about forgiveness. And um, forgiveness, if you're not sure what it means, it kind of means um, like if you do something wrong, and the other person who you did the wrong to would uh, understand that you did it and say, you know, that's okay, and kind of excuse it or clear it away so it doesn't get in the way of uh, your friendship with that person or your relationship with that person. So forgiveness is releasing, you're kind of wiping the slate clean of that, whatever that wrongdoing was. So that's what we're gonna hear about today. So we'll listen to the readings and then we'll talk about the readings after we hear all of them. That's how we're gonna do it today. So today's first reading is from the book of Sirach. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you forgive your friends when they mistreat you, your prayers will be answered and your sins will be forgiven. If you stay angry with someone, don't expect the Lord to heal you. Don't ask God to forgive you if you don't have pity on others. God won't forgive you if you stay angry at someone. So stop holding grudges and start obeying God. Think about the commands and the promise of the God Most High. Then forget about the sins and the ignorance of others. The word of the Lord. So today's psalm is, the Lord is kind and merciful. So hopefully you can say that along with me. With all my heart, I praise the Lord, and with all that I am, I praise his holy name. With all my heart, I praise the Lord. I will never forget how kind he has been. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord forgives our sins, heals us when we are sick, and protects us from death. His kindness and love are a crown on our heads. The Lord is kind and merciful. How great is God's love for all who worship him, greater than the distance between heaven and earth. How far has the Lord taken our sins from us, farther than the distance from east to west. The Lord is kind and merciful. Okay. So today's second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And he says, brothers and sisters, we live or die, whether we live or die, it must be for God rather than for ourselves. Whether we live or die, it must be for the Lord. Alive or dead, we still belong to the Lord. This is because Christ died and rose to life, so that he would be the Lord of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to stand up for the gospel and we're going to say, Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, Alleluia. So today's reading is from the gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came up to the Lord and asked, How many times should I forgive someone who does something wrong to me? Is seven times enough? Jesus answered, just not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This story will show you what the kingdom of heaven is like. One day, a king decided to call in his officials and ask them to give an account of what they owed him. As he was doing this, one official was brought in who owed him fifty million silver coins. But he didn't have any money to pay what he had owed. The king ordered him to be sold along with his wife and his children and all that he owned, in order to pay the debt. The official got down on his knees and began begging, Have pity on me, and I will pay you every cent I owe. Then the king felt sorry for him and let him go free. He even told the official that he did not have to pay the money back. As the official was leaving, he happened to meet another official who owed him 700, excuse me, 100 silver coins. He grabbed the man by the throat, he started choking him and said, pay me what you owe. The man got down on his knees and began begging, have pity on me and I will pay you back. But the first official refused to have pity. Instead, he went and had the other official put in jail until he could pay what he owed. When some of the other officials found out what had happened, they felt sorry for the man who had been put in jail. Then they told the king what had happened. The king called the first official back in and said, you are an evil man. When you begged for mercy, I said you did not have to pay back a cent. Don't you think you should show pity on someone else, as I did to you? 
The king was so angry that he ordered the official to be tortured until he could pay back everything he owed. This is how my Father in heaven will treat you if you don't forgive others, forgive each other as my followers with all your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff there. So let's go back to the first reading, which was pretty short and pretty straight to the point. And Sirach was a wise teacher. He was a uh, teacher for the Jewish people. So we remember the first reading is usually from our Old Testament, which is from before Jesus' time. So these are um, Jewish laws and, um, that they heard about. So Sirach was trying to teach the Jewish people how to remain faithful to God's covenant with them. And by covenant, I mean promise. And it's a really special promise because it's kind of, you know, God promised to give the Jewish people something, but he expected them to give something in return for them to love him in return. So it's a relationship, kind of like you have a relationship with your friends or your moms and your dads. It's, it's that kind of thing, but it's a really special, special promise that we have with, with God and that they had with God. And he, wants, he wanted to teach them to also loved is just as God loved them that they need to love each other. So he was trying to remind them, this is what you need to do. You need to forgive your neighbor's faults. And when we say neighbor, he doesn't mean just the guy living next door to you. He means everyone around you. So he was saying you need to forgive everybody their fault or when they do something wrong. And then once you do that, you pray. And when you pray, you're talking to God. And you ask him to forgive your sins. So this is how it works. You forgive, forgive people, and God will forgive you. Okay, that's what he wants us to do. So that's what Sirach was talking about there. Our second reading is uh, from Paul to the Romans. and we, um, That's pretty straight to the point. Basically, whether we live or die, it doesn't matter. We always belong to Jesus, and we always belong to God. And we know Paul was writing these letters to the early Christians um, to help them understand how to behave and what they should be doing, because they didn't have churches like we have now. Um, they just, it was a word of mouth, so they didn't know how they, you know, were supposed to act as a Christian, Jesus' teachings. They heard through word of mouth and through writings, but mostly word of mouth. So Paul was writing to the Romans, reminding them, no matter what happens, we always belong to Jesus, because Jesus died for us, for our sins. So um, when we talk about the church, we're going to hear about the church in some of our, in our intercession prayers this afternoon, and... When we say the church, we're not praying for the church building, we're praying for the people of the church. Because a lot of the times when we hear the church, we're referring to the people of the church. That's you and me, and everyone around us, and Father Michael, and everybody that works in the office, and all the teachers, it's everyone. That's the church, okay? So, something to think about there. And next, we're going to talk about the gospel. So, Jesus is... Uh, talking to Peter and his disciples, and Peter asks Jesus a question. He says, well, how many times are we supposed to forgive people? And he was expecting like an answer like seven times. And the reason, um, so Jesus says, well, it's 70 times seven. So what does that mean? He was saying to Peter, you need to keep forgiving over and over and over again. And I'm sure Peter was probably shocked to hear that, as well as the other disciples, because um, during that time, the Jewish law was when somebody did something wrong to you, the punishment was kind of equal to what the wrongdoing was to you. Okay, so if you ever hear that saying, an eye for an eye, that's where it comes from. So for Jesus to say, you need to keep forgiving people, it was a new idea, a very new idea. So Jesus is giving us some really important instructions today about um, what we should be doing to stay in that good relationship with him and with God. So as Jesus always does, he gives his followers a story to understand what he's trying to explain to them so that they can understand it better. Um, so let's, let's look at the story. Let's kind of take another look at that. So we have the king. He wants to take an account of everybody in the kingdom. He, maybe he let people borrow money. And it sounds like that's what, the, what happened here. So he let this first guy borrow some money, this, this official, and he borrowed 50 million silver coins. 50 million. So that's quite a lot. And then what happens? So he, the king wants it back, and he says, I don't have it. I can't pay it back to you. And um, he gets on his knees, and he says, please forgive me. You know, I'll pay you back as soon as I can. And 
the king decides, okay, you know what, I believe you, I know you, I believe you're sorry, and I think you'll make good on it, so I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to put you in jail. You don't even have to pay back what you owe. Just go. So that is a pretty awesome thing, because 50 million coins, that's, that's a lot of coins. So he, this official leaves, and as he's leaving, he sees another person that he knows who owes him, I think it said something like 100 silver coins. So that's a lot less than 50 million. So when he sees that official, he's like, hey, you owe me some money. I want my money back now. And he gets mad at him, and he starts to choke him. And this other poor guy, he's like, well, I don't have it. I can't pay you back. Can you have pity on me and, and forgive me? And I'll pay you back as soon as I can. And he says, no, I can't. And he has the guy arrested and put in jail until he can pay. So. The other people around hear what happened, and they know that the first official was just forgiven by the king. He didn't have to pay back the 50 million coins that he owed. So they go tell the king. So what happens then? You know, let's think about what happened. How, do you, what did the, how did the king react? Well, he was pretty upset. So he had that official come back in, and was, he was angry. Why do you think he was angry? He believed that that official was sincere and really, really sorry and really couldn't pay it back, and he was dishonest with him. So that's, he was mad. So he had him put in jail. And the other guy who was put in jail for the 100 coins, they let him out. So the king was upset because he forgave the, the debt that other person had, and he gave him a fresh start. So it was a fresh start, and he, the other official didn't give the same opportunity to someone else. He didn't give that other person a fresh start. So the first guy was really dishonest and not very sincere, and it didn't come from his heart. He, wasn't, he didn't really mean it. So that's why the king was very upset. So Jesus in this story is explaining about forgiveness and where forgiveness comes from. Okay? So, True forgiveness is something It's something that comes from your heart, and it can't be measured, and it can't be counted out, and it's our way of lovingly responding to someone, being kind to someone, and that's where it comes from, it comes from our hearts, and you, didn't, you don't attach any uh, conditions to that, so you don't ask for anything else in, in, in return for it. So that's how God's love is for us, all right? So that's what he's trying to tell us, what God expects from us, what Jesus expects from us. He expects, expects us to forgive other people. And because we're forgiven by God all the time, time and time again. It doesn't matter how many times you do something wrong. If you're sincerely sorry, God will forgive you. And he'll always be waiting for you. No matter how many times you do something wrong, God's always there waiting for you. But he expects us to do that for other people. And uh, when we heard the song today, it said, um, it kind of gave us a new commandment. And kinda, it's not really new, it's kind of adding on to the first commandment. And he's telling us we need to love other people just as I have, have loved you. And that's a lot, that's a big order, but we can do it. It just takes a little bit of effort, and we need to keep trying. But Jesus wants us to love one another and to treat each other like we want to be treated. And just how God, how much God loves us, that's how much we need to do that. But we can't really measure how much God loves us because, as in the first, I think it was in the, maybe the song, it's like you can't even imagine. It's like into space from the moon to the earth. You can't, you cannot measure it. It's just too immense, okay? So that's how much God loves us. So that's quite a lot. So he expects us to be kind and compassionate. And compassionate means you're sympathetic to people. Um, you know, if something bad has happened to somebody, you kind of, you feel bad for them and you want to be kind to them. So mercy means kindness, and that's what we're expected to do. And just remember that God loves us so much that He always forgives our mistakes, no matter how many times we do. And um, He expects us to do that for other people. And the love that we have for Him and the love that we have from other people comes from our hearts. Okay? So He's reminding us today that we need to forgive others, and, and it's unconditional. Just like God, you know, unconditionally loves us. And I wanted to talk about a few things that kind of tie in with forgiveness. So 
we always say the Lord's Prayer, uh, the Our Father, and there's a big word in there, and we say it all the time, and sometimes you may not understand what we're saying. So, you know, when we get to the part that says, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, I thought I'd point out that trespass doesn't necessarily, when you hear trespass, we think you go on somebody's property, that's trespassing, you're not supposed to trespass. When we say that in that prayer that God, that Jesus gave us, they asked him, how do we pray? He said, this is how you pray. So this is pretty important. That's our instructions in there, okay? And so when he's saying trespass, it means doing bad things to other people, doing wrong things to one another. So he wants to give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So he's saying, we need to forgive other people just as God forgives us. That's how we get forgiveness from God. So he's pretty clear on that. So the next time you say the Lord's Prayer, just think about that. So now maybe you can understand it a little better. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk about forgiveness, just really briefly, is reconciliation. Right? That's the sacrament that we receive, and we can get it more than once. That's one of the special sacraments we can receive over and over again. And maybe some of you who just received First Communion a few weeks ago, maybe you'll remember back in the winter probably, you had your sacrament of reconciliation. And I don't know, I think you guys probably did these, these little hearts. So we do these because the hearts represent our love for Jesus and Jesus' love for us. And you guys did little decorations on them. And you would go up to Father and you'd make your confession to tell him the wrong things that you did. And then he would forgive you in Jesus' name. And then you'd put this up on the little banner, kind of like your heart. So I thought that was kind of cute because it really, today's readings, we want to know that forgiveness always comes from our heart. And we need to forgive our brothers and our sisters and our neighbors, everybody around us. So just that's a good way to remember it comes from our heart. Um, so that's a good thing. And a reconciliation is kind of making things right, okay? So you're making your relationship with God and with other people right. Because if you do bad things, do a lot of wrong things, sometimes they kind of weigh down on you. So if you go talk to Father Michael and he forgives you in Jesus' name, sometimes you feel a lot better. Because when people do wrong things, the other person feels bad, and kind of, you usually feel bad too. So it's a good thing to do. So today we're going to do our intercessions, because that's our lesson for today. And our intercessions, we pray as a church, as a church people, right? And so this is what we're going to do. listen to these prayers. Um, as brothers and sisters in one loving family together, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. We bring before God's forgiving love, the church, and all of our people. And you're going to say, Lord, hear our prayer. We bring before God's forgiving love for people in prison and their families. Lord, hear our prayer. We bring before God's forgiving love people who are trying to make a fresh start. Lord, hear our prayer. Knowing that our Heavenly Father is listening, in the silence of our hearts, let us share our unspoken praise with Him. Loving Father, you are full of mercy and compassion. Help us to become people of forgiveness so that we may grow closer to you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I know you guys are all starting school this week probably, so I wish you good luck whether you're at home or maybe you're doing home and in school learning or maybe you're going to school. So I'm sure you guys are going to be fine no matter where you are and I hope you have a really good week and we miss you and we'll see you soon. Bye.